Hello guys and girls and uh, welcome to Harplinge, a small hamlet outside of Hamstad in the southwest of Sweden. And uh, you're going to be participating in the Grand Magus Studio Report 2023. I'm JB, also known as the GO. And um, let's go inside and see what the studio looks like. Follow me. All right, so we're in the Sweet Spot studio and um, we've actually got quite some history in this studio because uh, all the way back to uh, the hunt, we recorded the drums here. Um, and we also recorded the drums for Triumph and Power in the studio. But the first complete recording of an album was Wolf God. So for me, this is the Wolf God studio. As with Wolf God, we're recording with Staffan Karlsson. Uh, behind the levers and mics and everything. Uh, we did, uh, to brag a bit, we did uh, nine songs in three days. Uh, now I'm going to tell you a bit about the stuff that I've been using so far uh, on this uh, recording. For this album, I've been using two guitars. So the first uh, is this uh, Les Paul Custom it's got, a, got an ebony fretboard and stock pickups. I haven't changed anything on this um, from the way it was when I bought it. Fender Stratocaster, this is the, um, the Malmsteen model with the scalloped fretboard. So it's got the, um, the DiMarcio pickups, not the Seymour Duncans. And uh, it hasn't got a bullet truss rod. It's just got a, a walnut um, thing for the, for the truss rod. The fender goes into this Marshall JVM. And the only thing between the JVM and, and the guitar is an MXR microamp, like a boost. It's nice to have a bit more um, hair on the sound, you know. And other than that, I'm just using a noise gate. So there's, there are no other effects for the, uh, for the rhythm tracks. For the lead, I'm probably going to be using this wah as well. This is the Mike Amott signature wah. It's a Morley that he graciously gave me. And the Les Paul then goes into this PV5150. This one is from the first year they were made. It's got the famous block letter uh, version. And this one was bought in Los Angeles and it hasn't been uh, modified or anything. So I'm using a transformer uh, for the European voltage. Obviously, there's a difference there. So today, actually, I'm also going to try my old 72 Marshall 50 watt. This is actually a bass amp. Uh, it's made as a bass amp, but it you know doesn't really matter when it comes to amps that old uh, for the leads. We'll see how it works out. Otherwise, it would probably be the Marshall JVM for the leads. And let's check out the the speakers then. In here uh, we have two cabs that I'm using. Uh, the Marshall goes into this Mesa cab. The speakers in this uh, are DV77. And the 5150 goes into this PV cab. This is a PV5150 cab made at the same uh, year as the, as the amp. And this one's got Sheffield speakers in it, which are not that common, I think. So that's about it for the guitar stuff. Hi, folks. I'm Fox, the bass player in Grand Magus. And I'm about to show you the gear I use on the recordings for our 10th studio album. And uh, I use two basses. This one, the red one from 1975, Rickenbacker. And this one, the black one, used to be an eight string, but I use only four strings on it. Uh, and it was made in the early 90s, I think. This one got a bit more push in the low end. So for some songs this is the best one, for some songs I use this one. I use one pedal for tuning, nothing else. The amp 
I'm using is a um, solid state amp with inbuilt distortion and that's the distortion I use. So I don't have any other effects on the sound. It works really fine. Okay, that's all. Yeah. Hi everybody, Ludwig from Grand Magus here. I've got my Ludwig Classic Maple drum kit here and um, I've been a Ludwig uh, artist for about five years now. And uh, this was the first kit I bought as a official uh, Ludwig um, artist. And uh, it's a classic Bonham kit. It's uh, 26 by 14, uh, 14 by 10, 16 by 16, uh, 18 by 16 sizes. Obviously silver sparkle. And uh, I've got a, a hand hammered Supraphonic, uh, 14 by 6.5 inch deep. Coated Empress on the toms. Clear ambassadors on the bottoms. I've got a control sound coated on the other um, side. A classic hazy snare side on the bottom. The snare wires are just uh, the classic um, snare wires that came with the snare drum. Nothing special. I've got a power stroke four double ply coated on the bass drum and a coated ambassador on the resonant side of the bass drum with a hole in it. I always like to put a hole in it just for the, obviously to be able to put a mic inside and also for the feel of the bass drum. I think they get too bouncy, especially with a, with a double pedal if you don't have a hole in it. Symbols, I use Paiste symbols. Uh, I've been using Paiste symbols and I've been a Paiste artist for uh, actually around 20 years now. And I've got a big beat Hyatt with a, a classic 2002 sound edge bottom. I've got a giant beat 18 inch crash. And I've got a big beat. It's not a ride, it's a multi purpose symbol, but it's a 22 inch that I use as a ride, crash ride, it's kind of. And I've got a, a Paiste signature full crash 19 inch. And um, pedals, so I use a Tama DynaSync double pedal. That's fairly new for me. I used uh, the regular Iron Cobra before. And I really like this one. I've got... Uh, up upgraded the beaters to trick beaters. I think they're called dead blow beaters. Just because uh, I don't dislike the ones that were on. They were sort of the, um, felt beaters. But this, these just uh, last forever, the dead blow beaters. So I just uh, upgraded it. Yeah, I think that's it for the drums. That's enough of that. <laughs>